Beethoven. He's dead. Good. Hey, Ruth here, have you got a pencil? One thing the crown heads of industry hate worse than bad business. Well? Good music. Father has certainly collected the crown heads tonight. Yeah, almost a full house. Three kings. Steel, airways, an armament, and a queen, oil. Look at Monsieur Grenier's expression. Like a cat stealing cream. I wonder what he's dreaming about. Bigger and better bomb. Inspired by Beethoven. Or machine guns. No, no. That's Mozart. Clever. Mr. McCannon wouldn't know what you were talking about. Just a mechanic. You don't like him, do you? One likes human beings. Is it inhuman to get things done? Dull things. Tunnels. Uh, don't sentimentalize them, my dear. McCannon's a sort of human mole. It's all right on the ground, but lost if he comes up in the daylight tonight. With his toes. I was looking to die. Well, I expect to get that over. What's the idea, Mr. Lloyd? After a dose of Beethoven, a businessman will listen to anything. Your father certainly knows how to wear down sales resistance. <laughs> he should. If any of you folk are interested in dollars, come into the next room. We'll talk about it. Or would any of you like some more music first? <laughs> My chauffeur plays the concertina. Why, Mac? Keep off figures. Why? Millionaires don't understand them. You treat them like children and... Look after Ruth, please. Well, I suppose some of you were mighty surprised to find yourselves listening to Beethoven. But I've got a bigger surprise waiting for you. That orchestra was a sort of hors d'oeuvre. A mighty expensive one, too. But don't let that worry you. We're going to get that all back between us. I wish you'd shut those doors, my dear. Mr. McCallum, the inventor of the Alanite Diamond Steel, the man who built the Channel Tunnel and the Bahamas Miami Tunnel, remember? He's going to show us how to get it back. Martin, I do wish you'd sit down. You're all probably wondering why I asked you to come here today. Well, I wanted you to meet Mr. Richard McCallum who has a little proposition to put up to you. You know him already as the man who successfully constructed the Channel Tunnel in 1940. To tell you about it, I want to impress two things on your mind. Firstly, I'm as sane as you are. Secondly, Mr. McAllen is a good deal saner. Go ahead, Mac. I am only an engineer, putting up an engineering proposition. You may find it a bit fantastic, but I know it can be done. The proposition is the construction of an Atlantic tunnel between England and America. There are difficulties, of course. Most of them we already know. And it's quite probable that there'll be others. But if you'll bear with me, I'll try and give you the basic principles. What does make it possible is the fact that alanite steel has been proven to be non-porous, even under the terrific pressures which we might experience. And the new radium drill, invented by my friend Frederick Robin. Ruth, come here for a minute. There's something I want to say to you. 
Once upon a time, there were three bears. Oh, Robbie, you are a fool. There was a big bear, then a medium-sized bear. What do you smoke? Well, that's rope. Then turn to the bear, I right think. He'll be all right. They all look so hard-boiled. I know. Not a soft yoke among them. I hate waiting. When your son was born, Mac and I waited like this for, for 14 hours. It seemed longer. <laughs> He could well, here's England. Here's America. A tunnel. Like that. Maybe you'd prefer to express your enthusiasm in Mr. McAllen's absence. Don't all cheer at once. Well? Well, what do you say? They're saying it now. They're going to let you build? Probably, at my own expense. What do you mean they weren't interested? They could hardly sleep. Don't worry, darling. If you believe in it, they can't stop you. Money. You'll get it. Shall I? Of course. The world needs the tunnel. Huh. You make it sound like something heroic. Well, isn't it? You've always been like that. Doing great things, making the world better and safer, and believing all the time that you're doing it just for yourself. Hmm. What do you say, Mr. Grelier? I think it's an excellent idea. When your tunnel is built, all the other nations of the world will come to me for guns to blow it up. Ten little millionaires, feeling mighty fine. One took up tunnel shares, and then there were nine. <laughs> That's very funny. <clears throat> and don't forget, the government will back it. It means employment. Useless employment. That's the sort they prefer. Saves complications. If it was once finished. Yes, but how can it be finished? I said if. There'd be more money in it than there is in oil. You leave the Atlantic alone. Oil and water don't mix. It's a crazy scheme. Not so crazy as your murder. Mr. Lloyd and I propose to take up one third of the tunnel shares. What, sir? Lloyd and myself, Mrs. Lloyd and Martin, propose to take up one third of the tunnel shares. What's good enough for you is good enough for me. I'm with you. Uh, and don't you try and stop me. I'm trying to get in with you. Well, well I guess we may as well all start together. That is, provided my experts approve. You won't stop. You're dead right, I won't. Monsieur Grelier, the tunnel means peace. You make your profits out of war. What do you say? The International Armaments Corporation will take three million shares. Thank you, Monsieur Grelier. Your lead will give the public confidence to take up the remaining shares. Must it? Will you tell Mac Allen? Right. No. I will. <laughs> They're going to let me go ahead? You were right. They were listening. And I thought they were dead. What's the matter? You're not sorry, are you? Now that it's come true, I... I'm frightened. Why? I don't know. It's, it's so big. It won't be too big for us, will it? Oh, don't worry. the ultra-wave television and broadcasting station calling the world. Frank Keith announcing for the English-speaking union worldwide hookup. Today is the third anniversary of the inauguration of the Great Atlantic Tunnel Scheme. We're going to celebrate this birthday by giving the public of the two countries vitally interested an opportunity of seeing some of the progress that has been made in this colossal engineering enterprise. Armies of men have for the last three years been steadily pushing their way under the sea from both sides of the Atlantic. You're now looking at the latest of the completed sections on the English side. No doubt you'll all remember that the chief factor that made the commencement of this work possible was the invention of the radium drill by Frederick Robbins. Vast improvements have been made in this drill which has enabled
put the work to proceed at a rate which was undreamt of three years ago. The presiding genius behind all this tremendous effort is known to you all, Mr. Richard McAllen. His great faith and untiring energy has been the inspiration of thousands of workers. You have read of him. You've heard him spoken of. You're now going to see him and hear him speak. Mr. Richard McAllen. Today, the new Atlantic Tunnel represents the greatest industry in the world. Down here, far below the ocean's bed, strewn with the wrecks of centuries, men are working day and night. From both sides of the Atlantic, they are driving their shafts, drawing nearer and nearer to one another. And one day, far below the raging storms of the ocean, they'll meet. And the greatest engineering dream the world has ever known will become an accomplished fact. And to my friend, Mr. Jim Barton, and his co-workers at the American end, I just want to add, we're on our way. <laughs> Jones, about those radium gauges. May I remind you that you're married to Ruth, not to a radium gauge. Keep her amused, will you, uh, Mr. Roberts? My bright conversation is getting a little tarnished. Why don't you try soap? <laughs> Come on. Hey! Come on. Take that big parcel with you on the top. It's your birthday present to your son. You're a thoughtful sort of an idiot, aren't you? You think of everything. Lucky for you, I do. Where's Daddy? He won't be long. Daddy, he knows it's my birthday. Of course he knows. Daddy's always late, isn't he? Yes, but he can't help it. Poor Daddy. Why, does he mind? Of course he minds. But he's always kept busy. Emergency door, S. Is ready for the test, huh? Okay, he'll test anything once. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello? All ready for the test. All ready for the test, sir? Go ahead. Go ahead. Emergency door F, test okay, sir. Test okay, sir. Good. Well, I hope we never have to use it. <laughs> nice work, boy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, young ruffian. Many happy turns of the day. 
thank you. It's a pity Mummy didn't marry you. I know, it's a burning shame. Mac won't be a minute. He's just talking to Harriman. What about? Stadium gauges. The vibration one for the alpha oscillation one. Oh, oh, oh. Who told you about that? Daddy. You ought to be in charge of the tunnel. I'm going to when I grow up. Well, thanks. I hear they're both charming. <laughs> Mr. McAllen, Mr. Lloyd's just run through from New York. Says it's most urgent. Well, you better go ahead, dear. I'll meet you at the house later. Well, once upon a time, there were three bears. That old stuff. <laughs> yes, Bobby, that old stuff. Hurry up, off for it. It is my birthday. Come along, darling. It's going to be a lovely birthday. The McCann's getting a bit above himself, keeping you waiting. Hello. Mr. Lloyd, please. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. Lloyd. What is it? We want you in New York. Immediately. What for? I'll tell you when you get here. Well, you'll have to tell me now or do without me. You'll come or you'll do without us. Well, what do you mean? You're the servant of this company, McGill, not its master. It's time you found that out. Well, I don't quite understand. You're a paid engineer in the service of this company, which I'm one of the biggest shareholders. I realize that, but I can't leave now. It's impossible. Then, McGillan, you can shut down work on the tunnel. What do you mean? You want to know? Yes. Then do as you're told. Come to New York and find out. Hello. That's... You leave him to me. Write him gently, Martin. Remember, we can't do without him. It's going marvelous enough. Now let me put in another cylinder. Oh, no, let me. No, let me. Oh, all right. After all, it is yours. Mr. McCullen has just called up on the televisor, madam. Where from, the tunnel? No, madam. He's plain. He's plain? Uh, put it through to my room, please. Yes, madam. Oh, Robbie, you don't suppose that it's... Something must have happened. He wouldn't miss... Oh, wouldn't he? I'm terribly sorry, but... You mean you're not coming? I can't. You must explain to Jeff. How can I explain? It's his birthday. I know. I tell you, I'm terribly sorry, but... Sorry? Well, he won't miss me. What about me? What do you mean? Does my disappointment mean nothing? Well, I wouldn't be here if I could help it. It's urgent. The tunnel is... It's a got... tunnel. It's always a tunnel. Well, now you're being unreasonable. Is it so unreasonable to want my boy's father to be here for his own son's birthday? But, Ruth, don't you realize the tunnel's my job? My job's just being married. Oh, now, please, try and understand. Try. Did you try not to disappoint Jeffrey? Yes. I'm sorry, Matt. Of course the tunnel must come first. I wouldn't have missed Jeff's party for anything, but this is important. You'll have lots more birthdays. Sure. What are you going to do? Oh, we'll have a marvelous time. But, Robbie... Oh, that's fine. Fine. Hello. Hello. I've been... Operator. Do I do it? There isn't anything you can do. Oh, yes, there is. And you have lost the book of words. I'm a fool to cry. I don't like wet parties myself. I don't know what I should do without you. You don't even know what to do with me. Perhaps I ought to have married you. Oh, don't you worry. You've got the better man. I haven't got him. Oh, yes, you have. You'll see. What about that, Barbie? <laughs> we'll go 
going to have it now. And it's going to be a lovely party. One of those parties that people remember when they write their memoirs. And your mother's going to wear a paper hat. Why? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's, it's just one of those things. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm speaking from the penthouse of Mr. Lloyd's residence in New York City, and it's a wonderful night. And, wait a minute. Yes, I can see him coming now, Mr. McAllen's aeroplane. Well, let's see. Yes, you look very effective. And you look very angry. Huh? Is this I'm the right angle? Very good. I'm never angry. Above all the emotions. Do you mind? How will this be? Okay. And I once heard you complain that Mac Allen was inhuman. Uh, you remember everything that concerns Mac Allen, don't you? It is now my proud privilege to introduce to you over the air the man who changed a dream into a reality, the man who created the Atlantic Tunnel, Mr. Richard McAllen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid there isn't very much that I can tell you that you already haven't heard through the press. Sir, you think I'm inhuman? Aren't you? Well, anyway, I'm not married. I'm not surprised. Well, if I were, I might have the same attraction for you as McAllen. I doubt it. Even marriage couldn't change your infinite monotony. I'm in love with you. Thank you. It isn't possible for you to love a man like McGellan. There's a certain charm about a dreamer, even if he dreams of iron and steel. You love him? Yes. There's still a tremendous amount of work to be done by everyone connected with it. And if you'll excuse me, I'll get on with my share. Thank you. Oh, oh but say, oh, Mr. McGellan, oh, oh, wouldn't you like to give us some of your personal experiences? Now tell us what you and your fellow workers feel like as you borrow your way through the Atlantic Tunnel. Rat. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. McGowan. Here, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Tell us this. What do you do down there at night when you're through? Go to bed. Oh, oh, well, is it true that the tunnel kills a man a minute? What will be the effect of the tunnel on the political situation? Well, that's be 50 years from now. Oh, come on, Mr. McGowan. Give us a break. Come on, boys. All right, all right. All right. All right. Uh, there's one exclusive fact. Up to now, we have tested and completed sections up to and including H. And there's one thing that the tunnel has in common with all tunnels. Oh, what's that? that? It's hollow. Hello, Matt. How do you do? How are you? Oh, fine. Thank, Thank you. you. Is that what I came over for? Yes, and you're going to like it. I hate cheap publicity, and I won't have it. It's not for you to decide. My group controls one third of the tunnel shares. Well, this is a personal matter. You're a paid servant of my company. Excuse me. Certainly. Come in. Ah. Well, here I am. So I see. By the way, is Marston useful to you? Sure. Now, you tell him to leave me out of his publicity, you're going to lose him suddenly. That wasn't Marston's idea. He said it was. Yes, she's good at that. It was Valia. Sit down. You know why you come? Well, not to be photographed and interviewed. That's where you're wrong. Down there, under the Atlantic, you don't seem to realize there's a world crisis up. People are beginning to lose confidence in the tunnel, the... and that reacts on everything connected with it. So far as people are concerned, you are the tunnel. We've got to put you on the front page and keep you there. <laughs> Over my dead body. <laughs> uh, I'd put you on the front page, all right, but they wouldn't laugh. No, you've got to go places, make speeches, be photographed with the President of the United States and all that sort of thing. But well, what about the tunnel? I suppose it'll build itself. Well, you can't build the tunnel without money. You expect me to find that money. Well, I can't, unless people have got confidence in the tunnel. They believe in you. You're a romantic figure. If we can get you back on the front page, we can get back the confidence of the people, and the money will follow. Very well. If you want a dancing doll, I'll do it. Bring on your photographer. Have a minute. Nobody's going to look at a photograph of a husky guy like you without a woman in it to give it pep. And I reckon Valia would put pep into a photograph of an Egyptian mummy. Thank you, Father. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Robbins, madam. Morning. Good morning. Bobby, you look as though you want some fresh air. Well, I feel as though I want my lunch. Oh, but fresh air is much more nourishing. And you can smoke your pipe. But I don't want my pipe. I want this grapefruit. Besides, you don't like my pipe. Today, I like everything about you. Besides, I want to get away. Somewhere where I can breathe. I see. Fresh air. So fresh that it hurts. Please be happy. I'm terribly unhappy. Let's have lunch. Eat, drink. Oh, we'll be merry, all right. Robbie, I think you're the nicest man I've ever met. Yes, yeah, so do I. When I had Jeffrey, it wasn't so bad. But now that he's away at school all the time. I don't want to hamper Mac. I don't want to be a burden to him. But I'm alone. When he does come home, his real self stays behind in the tunnel. I've lost him, Robbie. I'm not jealous. But sometimes I wonder... He's never looked at anyone but you. Are you sure? Don't be silly. I want you to do something to please me. Yes, of course. What? Get a job of work. Work? Yes, haven't you heard of it? The hobby of rich people and the curse of the poor ones. Something really worth doing. Just as Mac thinks the tunnel is worth doing. If I were a man and could work in the tunnel, then perhaps I shouldn't hate it so much. What the devil are you talking about? Have you every confidence in Mr. McAllen? As an engineer. As an engineer, yes. I thought so. Now listen. Why not sit down? I think the tunnel will succeed. But the public at the moment is not quite so certain. They're selling their shares at any price. By throwing mine in the market, I convince them the scheme will be a failure. When the shares have reached rock bottom, we shall buy them all back again, including those, I hope, of our dear friend Lloyd. Then we shall control the tunnel syndicate. You mean you will? I don't think I shall have the time. I was hoping to be able to find an efficient chairman for the tunnel syndicate. If you throw in your shares with mine, It'll make it so much easier to find the chairman. And McAllen? McAllen is a servant of the company. You and I will be the company. All right. I'm with you. Better lay your hands in here. But well, I haven't touched anything. We don't take any chances. The trouble is this new gas is getting into the tunnel. It affects the nervous system. It's trying to paralysis. It's infectious? Yes. Of course, we're taking every precaution. But when people come into contact every day with cases, these nurses, for example. That's so. How long does the paralysis last? Well, we haven't found a cure for it yet. I think perhaps it might wear off in time. Doubtful, though. We one case with his eyes affected. He's practically certain to go blind. Quick, to Sainton. How did she come to be here? She volunteered to work in this section. But she must have known it was dangerous. McCallan would never have allowed it. That's why she wouldn't let us kill him.
getting back. My eyes. You're quite sure there's nothing really the matter with me? No, no, of course not. A little rest and treatment. You'll soon be yourself again. You've been overdoing it. Thank you, Doctor. That's all right. Just rest and keep quite quiet. Well, oh, she's all right. Quite all right. Yeah. Well, what's the matter? Mr. McCallan is very ill. Tunnel sickness. Don't tell her. The husband must be told, of course. What do you mean by frightening us all like this? Don't pretend, Bobby. I know what's really the matter with me. But you... Answer. Why did you make me say that? Because I won't be here when he gets back. What on earth are you talking about? I'm going away and I'm taking Jeffrey with me. Are you mad? I should be if I stay. But why? Because of this. But that doesn't make a difference to Mac. He loves you. He, he'll love you more than ever. That's just pride. Oh, Bobby, you know me better than that. You've got to help me. Lie to him. Invent something. Tell him anything. The only thing I beg of you... Don't ever let him know the truth. Oh, I can't. It's impossible for you and for me. For him and for me. Oh, Robbie, you can, you must. But how can I? I see him every day. How can I? For three years, he's hardly known that I exist. He ceased to need me when the tunnel took him. Well, I could bear that. I had something to give him then. I gave him a home. I gave him a son. I loved him. You still love him? Yes, I still love him. But does he still love me? I won't have him stay with me out of pity. Just sorry for me. He's no longer alone. But Barley Lloyd, that doesn't mean anything. How do I know? Oh, Robbie. I do add to your troubles, don't I? Oh, it's all right, but how can I tell him? Robbie, you can. You must. <laughs> Everything's fine. Shares are up again. We've got the money and we're ready to go ahead full steam. Where's Ruth? Look here, what's the matter? On the plane, I thought... What is this, a joke? No. What is it, then? Ruth's gone. Gone where? I don't know. You don't know? I'm trying to tell you that she's left you. She's not coming back. She's not coming back? No. Why not? You want me to tell me there's someone else who... Why should you think that? And why not? You've neglected her ever since this tunnel was started. How many times have you broken your dates with her? And then sent me to amuse her? She must be sick of the sight of me. And now for months you've been away in New York with the papers full of you and Valia Lloyd. Well, that's publicity. Policy, surely you told her that... I told her? But did you ever bother to? You left her to think what she liked. And now she's left you, and you can't understand it. Where is she? You're too late. By several years.
B2. Section E, test okay. Right. I'm through. You're through? You mean you're leaving the tunnel? Yes. I can't work with you anymore. Please don't ask me. I don't need to. Ruth leaves me and you can't work with me anymore. You think I can't understand that? Is that why? No. Is there any other reason? No. Mac! We've been friends for 20 years. That's over. But you're not quitting. You're going through with it. Whatever happens, you're going through with it. Okay, check and approve. The moving quarter must be made to turn smoothly, back and forth. Here you go, sir. Mr. Robbins, sir. Hello. Hello, Mr. Robbins. How Have are you? Have a good trip. Hi, thank you very much. Hi, Charlie. Won't you sit down, Mr. Robbins? Thank you very much. Okay, boys. Well? Well, we've run into the same problem that you've just beaten. Charter leaks. I've come over to find out how you plugged them up. With the bodies of 50 men. I shut the gates on them. Cemented off and drilled through. How oh, I wish I could get that out of my mind. Fifty men to save the lives of thousands. That's not your fault, Barton. That's the sort of bargain that the tunnel's been driving with us for years. Yes. Years. Years out of the lives of an army of men. Billions of dollars. The hopes of two nations sunk in that hole. But it's got to come through. It will come through. And when it does, it'll all be worth it, Robin. Yes, to those for whom the tunnel is built. I sometimes wonder about the builders. <laughs> Take Rick Allen. He'll go down in history. There'll be a statue of him in every square. Uh-huh. And a statue's a figure of a man in hard, cold stone. By the way, how is Mac? Still as bad a poker player as ever? I don't know. Haven't played with him for some time. Several years. But what's the matter? You were his best friend. The tunnel needs him and he needs me, so we're together. What about some lunch before I go? I gotta fly back at once. Sorry, I've got to go down. Oh, well. Good luck. We'll be meeting in the middle. We're coming. As fast as we can. The Atlantic Tunnel will soon be an accomplished fact. The significance of this achievement should not be lost on any one of us. For with the completion of the tunnel, we shall have accomplished not merely a remarkable feat of engineering, but something far greater. We shall have created a vital artery between the peoples of England and America, through which we'll pour a vast new commerce, bringing with it a common sharing of each other's progress a closer understanding of each other's problems. Yeah. An artery through which will cross the lifeblood of our two nations flowing into the heart of Anglo-American friendship. I tell you, the Atlantic Tunnel will be greater than any treaty. It will constitute the closest tie that could unite our English-speaking nations. The 
President of the United States. I heartily endorse the sentiments expressed by the Prime Minister. Furthermore, when this tunnel is completed, sums of money hitherto wasted on wages of soldiers and munitions of war will be diverted into useful and peaceful channels. Yeah. The nations of the world will be able with complete security to reduce their armaments to an unprecedented minimum. <laughs> Hello, Jeffrey. I say, when are you going to stop growing? You'll be bigger than your father soon. I hope so. Mr. Robbins, you are going to talk to Mother this afternoon, aren't you? You know, I'm old enough to work in the farm. Yes. I suppose you realize what you're asking your mother to do. Of course I do. Do you? Well, she's still grand. She'd understand. <laughs> Will you? All right, I'll do my best. Where is she? Until you can give us an approximate time limit for the work and an estimate of the final cost, I'm not prepared to put any more money into the tunnel. Speaking for my partner and myself, if Monsieur Grelier goes, we go too. But listen, gentlemen, you can't leave the tunnel now. Why, it'll be flooded in a month, and everything that you put in it will be lost. You can still save it. You've got to save it. Give me three months' time, and I'll guarantee I'll find out. Can you guarantee me my money? There are other things besides money. 
We don't deal in them. I'm very sorry, Mr. McCallum. Goodbye. But he's been trying to explain. It may not be the real traitor, only an offshoot. You're not going to throw me down, are you, Mr. Lloyd? Not after me. There are only two shareholders who count now. Grelier and Martin. But well, you still believe in me, don't you? I back you because I believe in you. I still believe that if this job could be done, you're the man that could do it. But I can't put any more money in. Atlantic Tunnel, 29 and a half. I'm sorry, McCallum. I'm sorry, Matt. I wish I could help. Money. The tunnel has brought you nothing but unhappiness. Does it matter? Yes. To me. Thank you. The tunnel. It's broken you just as it's breaking me. What has the tunnel to do with you? You've got everything you want. I'm not content with second best. I could have made you very happy, Matt. That's the way it is. Well, Matt, you can count them out. They put you in a tough spot. You said it. I told them if they let us drill for another mile or so, I did my best to convince them. The market closed steady. Father. Yes, my dear? Chesapeake, 46 and a half, 45 and three quarters. Why did you turn against him? Because he failed. Atlantic Tunnel, 29, 28 and 7, Well, it wasn't his fault. It was just bad luck. The world only recognizes two things, success and failure. Luck doesn't enter into it. Atlantic Tunnel, 28 and 116. Oh, but it must. You're not going to desert him. I put almost everything I possessed into this tunnel scheme because it represented an ideal. World peace through the union of the English-speaking peoples. It's been the dream of my life. You think I want to see it wasted? Then give Mac another three months. You could put up the money yourself. I haven't got it. But you can get it. Oh, you think that's easy? You go try. I am trying. Please, Father. Because I asked you. I've never refused you anything. But the matter doesn't rest in my hands now. The man who holds the key to the whole situation is Mustard. It would be Mustard. He holds a controlling block of shares in the tunnel syndicate. In fact, their present unsatisfactory state is his doing. How? Well, he threw a colossal number of shares on the market. Stampeded it, in fact. And when he knocked the bottom out, bought them all back and a lot more besides. Master. By this time tomorrow, every tunnel share will be on the market. You won't be able to give them away. And the day after? We shall control them all. And then? Those fools have no courage. McAllen's right. This volcano may delay the work three months. Oh, I want to speak to Miss Austin. Do you mind? I was just going. Mr. Marston is fortunate in everything. Aren't you? Always. Goodbye. You could afford to finance the tunnel work for three months, couldn't you? Well, I could. Well, why don't you? So well, good money after bad. Uh -huh. But it might save the tunnel. Or isn't that important? It might ruin me. That's much more important. Have a cigarette. Well, what's on your mind? You've always gotten everything you've wanted, haven't you? Always? No. Not quite. You wanted me. Well, you still got the first refusal, or is it the fifth? 
How much do you want me? How much? In dollars. Oh, a bargain. Mm-hmm. Oh. I had no idea you were so feminine. I don't know what you mean. You indulge in a little spectacular self-sacrifice, and our mutual friend like Helen gets the benefit. What about me? You mean that? Shall I tell Max that he can go ahead? No. I'll tell him myself. If you had the money to carry on for three months, you'd know one way or the other. Yes. But who'll put up the money? I will. You? Well, why not? As one of the biggest shareholders in the tunnel, I don't want to lose the money I've already invested. I always thought you were against me. I can only say I'm sorry. That's all right. This is the Atlantic Tunnel Company staff broadcast. As was announced in our bulletin an hour ago, Mr. McAllen has returned from New York. The tunnel safety men report that conditions in Section K have greatly improved. There has been no trace of gas during the last 24 hours. No trace of gas! There's plenty of water here! I owe the money for you. I tell it up, I've done as I came with them, but conditions are too bad. You better talk to the man yourself. Come on, dear, then I've news for you. There are two things necessary for building this tunnel. Money and courage. Well, we ran out of money, but we didn't run out of courage. We all know what we're up against down there, and all we want is a chance to carry the job through. Speak for yourself. I wouldn't ask you to do anything I wouldn't do myself. You know that, don't you? Aye, I'll say that for you, Max. All right. I fixed up the money. Now I want to know who's coming with me. Very well. Mr. Robbins and I will go together. We'll see you when we get back. But if we have to finish the tunnel ourselves, it may take us quite some time. I'm with you, sir. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, sir. Come on. Uh, I'm coming too, sir. You and I have known each other a number of years. It's a source of great satisfaction to me to know that my confidence in you hasn't been misplaced. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I have a disturbing piece of information. The tunnel is to be carried on experimentally for three months. I suppose it wouldn't be news to you to know who would supply the money. No. And our agreement? I'm sorry. Idle curiosity, perhaps. And why did you do it? Hello? Miss Lloyd, sir. Is there any message? Tell Miss Lloyd I'll be right along. Ten minutes. Very good, sir. I see. You'll get everything you want, don't you? Always. And everything that's coming to you. Oh, I'll risk that. Can I drop you? No, no. Good night. Good night. I think you ought to change your mind. See that? Thanks. No, I shan't change my mind. Sorry. I'm sorry too. Good night. 
Right. I certainly appreciate your sticking to your job. Here's some more that feel the same way that you do about it. Now we're going to open these doors and we're going into Section K. Communicate with the tunnel mouth. The men won't hang back when they know we're here and that it's safe. Thank you. They'll believe it's safe enough if he tells them your own son is working in the tunnel now. My son? Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Get your mask on. What is the meaning of this? He's your son. The tunnel is the right place for him. Who said so? Ruth. We only want men down here. I know. That's why I've come. Yes, you are putting nearly a man, aren't you? I hardly knew you. I've wanted to come for years. Mother stopped you? Yes, she did. Mm. Only until I was old enough. She said, 
said you wanted me to be of some use to you when I came, and I'm not just a bird. I wish you hadn't. It isn't very healthy down here. I don't want it to be healthy. I hope it's good and dangerous. Why? Well, it's just a bit of responsibility being your son. Oh. That's why I'd have hated a soft job. See, the fellas at school always expected me to do these dangerous things just because of you. And I did, too. Well, we'll let you stay. Really, Dad? Yes, you can go on this ship. They're just changing over. When you come off tonight, we've got to have supper together. We've got a lot to talk about. Well, that'll be grand. Well, my lad, you don't know what work is. Look after him, will you, Harriman? He's on this ship. All right, sir. Don't get tonight, Dad. Better. All right, sir. Thanks. Well, the boy's working. Good. Good idea. There's a lady to see you. Who is it? Miss Lloyd. Ask her to come in. Yes, miss. Will you come in, please? How do you do, Mrs. McAllen? Perhaps you'll remember we met once when the tunnel was first planned. Yes. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Please, may I speak to you alone? Mary, will you bring some tea? We're alone now, Miss Lloyd. You wanted to talk to me? It's very kind of you to see me. Why not? I liked you very much when we met before. And I liked you. I wanted to know you better then. But not now. I should be afraid of liking you again. Don't be afraid. Won't you tell me why you've come? Did my husband send you? Why do you ask that? Did he? No. I'm glad. I didn't think you'd do that. And you know why I've come? Thank you, Mary. 
But perhaps Miss Lloyd will call. Certainly. Milk? Thank you. No sugar. No, I don't know why you've come. But I... I suppose there's something you want me to do? I want you to divorce Mac. I thought so. On what grounds? Does that matter? I think it matters very much. I love him. So do I. How can you say that? You deserted him when he most needed help. You took away his son, his, his home, even his best friend. How could you do it? What right have you to ask? Every right. When you wrecked his life, you wrecked mine. What do you suppose it's been like for me all these years? Waiting for something to happen. Pretending to myself that he might care for me if, if only you weren't there. Oh, my dear. I'm so sorry for you. You're not. You're only sorry for yourself. I can't understand how you can be so callous. Can't you see how he suffered? How he's changed? Oh, are you blind? Yes. Quite blind. Oh, my dear, I am so sorry. Have you seen my son? Close the section. But my son is... God's son. sake, close the section.
microwave reporter bringing you the latest news events. We have to announce with deep regret a terrible disaster to the Atlantic Tunnel in which it is killed. The accident is section K, and it was found necessary to close the emergency doors of this section to save the whole of the tunnel workings from being affected, which might have resulted in the loss of thousands of lives. The time has come when we can no longer cherish our illusion. We cannot blind ourselves to the far-reaching consequences of this disaster. The destruction of the Atlantic Tunnel may mean the destruction of the peace and sanity of the civilized world. We know only too well that the Eastern Federation of Powers has long been preparing for an opportunity to strike with the sovereignty of the people of the Western Hemisphere. This is their opportunity. But we have within our reach a mighty weapon of defense. Let the people of the British Empire and the people of the United States of America take themselves to stand shoulder to shoulder and no power in the world can be strong enough to defeat them. The President of the United States. The inspiring declaration of the Prime Minister is one so fraught with the fervor of our own love of liberty that there can be but one answering cry from the heart and conscience of every true American. And that cry is, we stand together. We, the English-speaking peoples of the world, have more than a common tongue, more than a common tradition. We have a common trust, the most sacred trust to the history of mankind. And that, my friends, is to preserve the eternal light of progress in the temple of humanity. Yes. To those who would extinguish that light, we say in the immortal words of Lincoln, it shall not perish from the earth. And by the grace of God and the glory of these united people, our civilization shall not perish. Bravo! Volunteers to go with me. Get them. I'll get you three, four. I'm coming with you. Bring them along. My son! 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 Hello, hello. List of known casualties and missing. Robert Turner, dead. John Graham, 
missing. Jeffrey Marlin, dead. Who? Marlin, madam. Jeffrey Marlin. <laughs> My son also. <laughs> William Sewood, dead, sick, unrecognizable. No, unrecognizable. Is that you, Robbie? Oh, Is Jeffrey all right? Tell me. Yes. Is he all right, Robbie? Fred Jefferson, missing. Why don't you answer me? John. Oh, no. Dead. Francis. Who's Dan. standing there? Dead. It's... John. Not Jeffrey, Mr. is it? Missing. Robert Burton. Who is it? Concussion. Who is it? Arthur Stewart. Missing. William Silwood, dead. Get out of here. Get out. Yes, sir. Mac. I see. You did work in the tunnel, didn't you? Or Ruth, why didn't you trust me? Mac, is Jeffrey all right? Well, he couldn't have suffered very much. Honestly. It must have been over very quickly. The smoke... Yes. Pretty hard on us both, my darling, isn't it? I did like him so much. He liked me, too, I think. Silly kid thought I was sort of a god. And the god let him die, Ruth. Never held out a hand to save him. Give me a little comfort if you can, dear. I need it. Latest report from Section K, temperature rising. I got the men. Harriman, McLean, and Seawood have volunteered to go back in the tunnel with you. Fine, bring them along. You can't go. I must. I won't let you. You're all I've got left in the world. You can't leave me now. I love you so. Must your work take everything? Yes. It has taken everything. Oh, I'll get back my sight, they say. But who'll give me back my son? Oh, thank you. You're right. It's taken everything. But if I had my choice again, in my life again, I should do just the same. Because I believe... I believe that my work will bring peace to the world. Peace? Say that you believe it. If you believe it, yes. Tell me to go, then. Kiss me and tell me to go. I want what you want. I believe what you believe. I love you. And I tell you to go.
They'll never get through that temperature. Five feet. So do we. Well, we're ready to blast. If you take the risk, let's chance it. Okay. Let her go, boy. Drill. Right, scrap! Today is a great day, perhaps the greatest day in the history of the English-speaking peoples. The Atlantic Tunnel is an accomplished fact. At the English end, the opening ceremony is being performed by the ruler of the British Empire. taking you over to the American end, where a similar ceremony is being performed by the President of the United States.